Yeah. I think that's like a big thing. Like, uh, I like to have fun and like to play around. Uh-huh. So I think the more like play and like uh-huh. less focused on like, getting better, I think the the more I'll improve. Okay, so good. I, I agree with you. What else? Um, I want to book a co-star role by Easter. It's a goal of mine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Have you, do you have representation? Have you tried to get representation? Yes, you I have do. representation. Yeah. What do you have, a theatrical or commercial? Uh, commercial, and then I have a manager. Okay, are they getting you out? Uh, here and there, not so much uh, this month, but I'll say maybe once every two weeks, probably not that much. But okay, well, yeah. that's not bad. All right. And how are you doing on your auditions? Are you getting callbacks? I'm getting callbacks. Uh, I recently, for FanDuel, a commercial, it was like a big commercial. Uh-huh. I was like one of the top three candidates, so like they basically okay. put me on hold. So to add this to your preparation on for commercials and theatrical, okay. the night before your audition, visualize yourself going in there mm-hmm. and having the best time of your life. Okay. Visualize your agent or manager calling you and saying, Emmanuel, you pronounce your name right? Yeah. Emmanuel, they booked you. All right. You do that before you go to sleep because while you're sleeping, your mind works on creating that outcome. Are you relaxed when you go into your auditions? I think so, yeah. Okay, good. What else? Other goals, obstacles? Um, I'll go on the obstacles. Um, obstacle wise, when it comes to like explaining emotions like on cue in front of like other people in the room, like it's really hard for me to do. When it comes to experiencing emotions, is that what you're saying? Yeah, like actually feeling them and like okay. letting them out on camera. Like I like. But it's hard for you to do because why? I don't know. Okay, so the number one thing to know is this, which you may or may not know. As soon as you worry about the emotion. It's not going to be there. Anytime you've been emotional in your life, you never said, gee, I hope I can get emotional. I'm on a date. I hope I can get emotional with this person. <laughs> you never did it. Right. You ever went to a funeral and you said, gee, I hope I can cry. No, never happened. What happened is you're involved in your circumstances mm-hmm. and the emotion takes care of itself. Okay. okay. If I throw this book at your head, are you going to say, gee, I hope I can get angry? <laughs> You understand? <laughs> you're going to just be angry because you're involved in the circumstances. Right. Does that make sense? Right. So you want to make choices, which we're going to talk about today, that involve you in the circumstances and let the emotion take care of itself. The reason all actors often don't get emotional is because they're monitoring and waiting for the emotion. Okay. Does that make sense? They feel obligated to get emotional. Okay. You want to feel obligated to fulfill the character's objective, mm-hmm. the goal with the fighting for and the emotion will be there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, if you, in real life, do you get more? Do you get emotional more easily? Uh, no, I'm more of a relaxed type of person. Okay, person. so then, are you wanting to express emotions in your acting that you don't express in real life, or? Well, I mean, when playing the character who's feeling emotional. Yeah. What? Had, can you think of a, a scene or something you had to do and you weren't able to get emotional? Ooh. Oh, okay. So um, it was like a scene where I was I was playing like an abusive boyfriend, right? And I was supposed to be like kind of like telling her that she needs me, and okay. that the abusiveness is something that she really needs, right? And I, I couldn't really get into the like, I'm the bad guy here. Like I should be. Okay. Like, like I'd say what I was saying, and after I'd be like, oh, sorry about that. Okay. Like, so the thing you know is, I mean? uh, and you'll hear this from a lot of actors, bad guys don't think they're the bad guys. They, they think they're the good guys. guys. Do you understand? So you have a justification, okay? You're doing it for her. Right. Because if you don't do it, her whole life's going to be fucked up. Gotcha. Because she's got no direction. She doesn't know how to take care of herself. Right. She's like a child. I'm like the fucking daddy. And if I don't discipline her, then she's going to be fucked. Does that make sense? Gotcha. Now, I'm not, I wasn't trying to get emotional. I'm trying to think the way the character, character thinks. thinks. And then as a result of that, the emotion will be there. But as soon as I start watching myself, I'm not going to be involved in the circumstances. So you always think of yourself as the good guy. And that you're doing it because you're doing it for them, or you're doing it because you need it, or they deserve it, or you got fucked over as you as a kid, and that's what your conception of love was. So you want to justify it and think the way the character thinks, and then the emotion will be there. Does that answer your question? I see, I see where you're going from. Okay, good. What else you got on there? Any other obstacles? Oh, obstacles. Uh, crying on cue. Okay. I don't think I'll ever be able to Let's do that. Let's talk about that. that. First of all, do you cry in your life? No. Okay. 
the way you said no, like, what the fuck would I cry? Yeah. Okay, so what What do you mean by that no? I just don't. I don't know. I'm never going to cry. Okay, when you were a kid? Okay, yeah. How old? I mean, you know, like elementary, middle school. Okay. Uh, now, at some point, you decided not to cry anymore. I think it was on, like, football. Okay, because you decided that if you're a man, you don't cry. Is that true? It was more like, yo, we're going to figure this out regardless. Crying's not going to help. Okay, good. So, the thing is, the number of times you will have to cry in something will be very insignificant. Cool. But, so let's say, but you do have to cry. Yeah. So let's figure out how we can get it. Let's, did you work on, which scenes did you work on for today? Uh, the Your one. Brother and so sister. Brother and sister. And Sylvia. And so, so, okay. Sylvia. Okay, so let's start with the brother and sister. And see if we can work dealing with crying into it. Oh, all right, all right, yeah. Okay. Sure. Because the thing is, it here's part of it. Do you do you want to be able to cry? Uh, eventually, not today. No, but do you want? Is that a, do you feel like? Is it okay for the world to see that way? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, you're okay with that. Yeah. Okay, good. So close your eyes. Yeah. Put your hand over your heart. I want you to visualize, yeah, that's the word it is. I want you to visualize Emmanuel as a 10 year old kid. And now I want you to visualize Emmanuel as the adult you are now coming into the same picture. And I want you to imagine getting down on your knees next to him and telling him it's okay to cry, it's okay to feel all his feelings. Nobody's going to laugh at him and make fun of him. And if they do, you'll be there to kick their asses. All of his emotions are fine. Crying is completely acceptable. It takes great strength to be vulnerable enough to cry. Open your eyes. Now, you ever go to the movies and see someone cry? Are you in the movie theater? Yes. In the on the screen? Oh on the screen, yeah. Okay. Do you say to yourself what a loser? No. Okay. You understand? Remember, there are millions of people sitting in the audience watching a few people cry. Mm -hmm. Now you already got more vulnerable because you gave yourself permission. Can mm -hmm. you see that? Can you feel that? It's in your eyes. Oh okay. <laughs> okay, so the thing is so every day for Two weeks. You're gonna visualize manual at different ages. Yeah. Visualize the adult you are now coming to the same picture. Tell him it's okay to cry. All of his feelings are acceptable. Nobody's gonna make fun of him. Nobody's gonna hurt him. Even the football player, even the person you are now. So different ages every day. So you give yourself permission, because that's the first step. Because sometimes we think, yes, I want to be able to cry, and sometimes but part of us thinks, what the fuck? I'm not crying, that's stupid. Do you understand? Okay. I'm not going to figure anything out that way. Do you understand? <laughs> so you want to give yourself permission. That's the first step. All right. Got it? Gotcha. Any other obstacles? Uh, oh, uh, body movement, like on camera. Yes. Like while giving lines, like what do I move my hand? Okay, so let's talk about it. For the next week, every time you watch TV or movies, notice how much people are using their hands. They're mostly not. Okay. Maybe a little bit more in comedy or a little bit more when they're agitated like this, mm -hmm. but mostly they're not because it's too distracting. Okay? So in general, the less you do, the better. But you watch and see what they're doing. Mostly they're not doing. The mistake the actors make when they go, you fucked me over. Okay? Every time they refer to the other person, they point at them. Every time they refer to themselves, they point at themselves. By doing that, you give me information I already have. Mm -hmm. I don't like you. I don't like you. I already know, if I say I don't like you, I don't need to do that. That's not new information. Am I doing behavior that enhances the experience? Now, occasionally, if I want to make a point, I'll use my hand. Okay. But not nonstop. Okay. Unless I'm playing a preacher. And then I'm trying to use, you get the idea? So it depends on the character. But why, who, whose work do you like? 
Ooh, uh, what's Who are some of your favorites? That dude's name's a new dude. Uh, sorry to bother you. What's his name? Sorry Keith. if Keith was still some. I'm horrible with names. Okay. He's a good actor. Sorry to bother you is the name of the movie. It's a new movie, yeah. What kind of. <laughs> does he use those jet. Look at. Uh, does he use his hands a lot? Yeah, he was very. He was is very, it a comedy? Comedy like drama, I would say. Okay. Yeah, so the more comedy, generally the more handwork you can find. Nice. But you watch and take note this week of how much people. Another thing you also can do is if you see a scene you like, or see some scenes of movies you like on YouTube, mm -hmm. watch the same scene a few times. Yeah. Try to figure out what it works, how much movement they're doing. Okay. But the better actors will probably have very still. Okay, they're not doing that much movement. The other thing you also have to be aware of is matching. Okay, there's a scene in uh, Cape Fear. You know that movie with De Niro? Okay, there's a scene where he's with this girl in a restaurant. And he's sitting there like this the whole time. He doesn't move his hands. Well, she is like this, playing with the buttons a little. So in one shot, she's like, with the buttons open. And, then, and she's not doing it in the shot. And the next one, the buttons are closed. And then open again. Mean that she didn't match. So if you're doing behavior, mm -hmm. sometimes you'll see in the movie the person drinking and there's this much in it, then there's this much and there's this much, and no one ever had more. Do you understand? So you have to be aware that you want to match your performance. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do a lot of gestures, you're going to be able to repeat it. The other thing you'll see when people are doing, they're doing, they're talking and then they're moving back. And then they're talking and they're moving back. You don't want to do that. You want to move forward once to make a point. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But not every time you speak. Okay. And not habitually. Right. So, simplicity is generally better. Yeah. Does that make sense? Are there exceptions? Yeah. If you're holding people up or doing something comedic, you know, there's generally more. I think when you see, uh, what's the name of that black, very, very popular stand up comedian who does movies? Carol Hart? Yeah. I think he does a lot of gesturing. Okay. He does. he does it particularly on stage when he's doing stand-up. Do you do stand-up also? Yeah. Uh, he does it more there, but there's a lot of frenetic energy mm -hmm. and physicality. But generally speaking, most actors, less is more. Okay. We're, remember, we're interested, more interested in what you're thinking than what you're saying. And we're interested in what you're thinking when you're really listening like you are right now. Does that make sense? You don't have to do very much to be seen. Also, there are actors who, every time they speak, they're doing this. Head up and down. Head side to side. That's also distracting. Okay. Does that make sense? So in general, stillness is better, but if the character's frenetic or nervous, maybe that'll change. Okay. Does that make sense? Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. And with the hands, generally, in an audition, where should the hands be? By your side? Well, let's let's talk about it. It's very paper. simple. One of the reasons I like to hold the script is because it gives me something to do with my hands. Okay. Okay? It's right here. Mm. Okay. That makes it easy for me. I'm holding this. Now, some actors don't like to hold the script. Okay. okay? That's fine. But we'll do the scene. Let's do that first scene now. We'll talk about all these issues, with, particularly with the material. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the brother sister scene. You have a copy? Uh, no, it's just on my phone. I couldn't read it on my phone. Okay, you want me to give you a copy? That would be great. All right. Oh, and I, I went over it as if I was a sister. I don't know. What? You took B? I took B. <laughs> I took B. That's fine. Yeah. How come you did that? I, uh, I like B. Okay, so you can do B. <laughs> all right? Yeah. Just tell me when you're ready. Uh, all right, all right. How's it going? What are you doing there? Wow. No hug? When'd you get out? This morning. Why are you I here? took three buses to get here. Why are you here? I had to put an address down for my parole officer. That I didn't want him to see you. Look, I said I was sorry. How are you going to stay mad at me? Sorry? You're apologizing? Uh, we're going to need a little bit more than that. I don't know what else to tell you. I'm trying here. Wait, hold on. I don't know what else I can do. I'm trying here. It's not my problem. No. That's not good enough. I want you to leave. That's the one. Oh, uh, no. It's not good enough. I want you to leave. Leave? Where am I going to go? It's not my problem. 
can't leave. My parole officer can come in for the weekly visits. I have to have a place to stay. I'll just tell him it didn't work out. Look, either I stay here or I have to go to some halfway house. I can't take it there. You should have thought of that before you got into that shit. I'm clean now. I promise, please, we're family. You lost that right when you stole all my stuff. Lost everything. Don't you understand that? I know. And I'm sorry. I promise to pay back every penny. I swear I just need help right now. Can't do this again. How do you expect me to believe in you? I don't know what else to tell you. I've changed. I took classes. I got better. I realized I was powerless to the drugs. It's a disease, they told me. Don't give me that. When you first started taking that stuff, I told you not to do it. Disease? You talk about it like, like it's cancer or something. Like people are choosing cancer over family. You messed up, and now you gotta deal with your consequences. Please just give me a chance to once about that time too weak. Please, go now, Tyler. Come see you at the halfway house. If you're doing okay, we'll see if we can get you some visits. Doesn't work that way. It was good to see. You. Good. Now it's in prophecy. No right. Did you miss me? No. Come on, you missed me. Not a bit. Come on. Oh. You missed me. No. This is a nice place. I'm sure you'd like to steal everything again, wouldn't you? I wouldn't steal it again. I would never do that. I don't believe How it. much is that TV set? By the don't way? worry about it. Can I stay here for a few minutes? You can't even walk inside. Look, I got a deal for you. Okay, you're gonna like it. Start a new business. I'm gonna make you my side employee. I don't wanna hear any of this. When did you get out? I got out uh, nine hours ago. I've been on the bus for nine fucking hours. Great. It looks like you're going to have to do about 13. What are you so hostile about? Look, you stole all my stuff. I don't want you in my house. I don't want you in my house. I went to jail. Is that enough punishment? Nope, it's not. I'm done with you. Look, I don't know why you have this attitude. I'm very disappointed in you. You stole all of my things. Everything. I lost everything. Well, obviously you did well because you got it back. Well, I bounced back because I know what to do. You need to figure that out for yourself. I'm not going to help you, though. I'm your brother. I don't care. I'm your fucking brother. Okay. Don't you remember when we were kids? I don't care about that. It's not about kids. We're adults now. And you're not an adult. You're still a kid. I'm done with Look, kids. Why don't, why don't you just call the cops right now? Okay, I will. Call 911. Have me get arrested. Okay, sure. Maybe you can tell them to shoot me when they come home. I won't do all that, but I'll definitely call them. I'm very disappointed in you. Great. Can you leave now? How's it going? We're just doing it again. How's it going? Why are you here? Wow. No luck. When did you get out? This morning. Took three buses to get here. Why, why are you here? I had to put an address down for my parole officer. I didn't even want to see you. Look, I said I was sorry. How long did you stay mad at me? Sorry? You think apologizing is going to fix that? I don't know what else I can do. I'm trying here. It's not good enough. I want you to leave. Leave? Where am I going to go? It's not my problem. Can't leave. My parole officer can come here for the week with this. I have to have a place to stay. Look, I just told him it didn't work out. Look, either I stay here, or I have to go to some halfway house. I can't take it there. You should have thought of that before you got on that shit. I can't help you. I'm clean now. I promise, please, we're family. You lost that right when you stole all my shit. Lost everything. Don't you understand? I know, I'm sorry. I promised to pay you back every penny. I swear I would just need help right now. Can't do this again. How do you expect me to believe in you? I don't know what else to tell you. I've changed. I took classes. I got better. I realized I was powerless to the drugs. It's a disease, they told me. Don't give me that shit. I told you not to do it when you first started using it. A disease? You talk about it like it's cancer or something. Like people are choosing cancer over family. I'm sorry, I can't help you. You made your decisions, now you gotta deal with your consequences. Please just give me a chance. I won't survive that time too weak. No. 
I want you to go. In fact, leave now. Tyler, I'll try and come see you at the halfway house and I'll see if you're doing better. Maybe if you do, you can get some visits. That's what I want that to see. Good. Now, so let's say it says in the stage directions. On your last speech, we say, Tyler, or try and come and see if they have passed. If they say, the better we can come, they might come here because it says, he cries. Okay, that's where it says it. Okay. Now, it, do you have someone picked out for your brother? Yeah. Did you have someone? Yeah. Okay, is this your own brother? No. A friend of yours? Old friend who was just horrible. Okay. Yeah. Were you close to this person? At one point, yeah. Okay. Do you have happy memories about him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where is he now? Somewhere in San Francisco. Is he in trouble or he's all right? I don't talk to him anymore. Did you have a falling out with him? Yeah. Is that who you're using in this? Yeah. Did he rip it? Did he take advantage of you in some way? Uh, he didn't pay last month's rent. He just dipped. He disappeared? Yeah. And did he try to reach you after that? Uh, about a month later. And what did you say to him? Fuck you. What did he want? When he the security him? deposit. He wanted the security deposit? Or some of it. After he hadn't paid rent? Yeah, fuck him. Did he not understand how nah, life works? I didn't care. I was just I was like, yeah, you suck. I'm done. Security deposit. Yeah. Now. In order to do this scene, there has to be the love between the two of you, oh, okay. not just the hate. You understand? <laughs> I hate that too. Okay. Yeah, right. So, in my opinion, directorially. Okay. Because if it's so, if you have just hatred for him, you don't even need to have this phone conversation. Right. You just need to say, Shut get the, the fuck door. out of here and slam the door. Shut the door. You know so there's got to be a reason you continue to talk to him. Okay. You All understand? Right. Does that make sense? I can see that. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about first your objective. All right. Your goal, what you're fighting for. Your objective is something you want mm -hmm. that is possible but difficult to obtain. It's got to turn you on. It's got to serve the material. When you do a movie, you have a super objective, something driving you from beginning to end of the movie, the thing you want to accomplish most. Let me give you a simple analogy. Let's take basketball. Do you follow basketball? I love basketball. Okay, good. So let's take the Lakers. Every year they have a super objective. Same way when you get a script, you have a super objective driving the entire script, driving the entire season. Their super objective is to win the world championship. Yeah. Then for each game, each scene, you have an objective mm -hmm. to defeat the other team. Right. Then within the game, you have tactics or actions or mini objectives. To pass the ball, to throw a layup, a free throw, a three-pointer, to block, to outrun the other team, to trash talk. The more tactics you have, the more likely you are to win the game. Okay, If your objective is to get this son of a bitch as far away from you as possible, what are your obstacles? What's keeping that from happening? Because like, if the Lakers had no obstacles, if they could just throw the ball in and no one's blocking it, then not, people aren't that interested in the game. Right. If your objective is to get rid of this guy and all you need to do is slam the door and not say anything, who cares? Okay? It's not as interesting to watch, in my opinion. Okay. And you don't need this much dialogue to take care of that. That's true. So, on some level, this guy's your brother. You still have to love him on some level. You still have to remember maybe when you were kids and you were playing together. Now, this brother, he's older or younger? Uh, a little bit younger, about two years. Okay, so you, if you were kids, how old were you when you knew him? I was two years older. No, but I mean, are you using the person you knew as your friend, or you're imagining your brother? Oh, I'm using my friend. Okay, so how old, little were you when you knew him first? I see, I was 19. Okay, so he was 17. Yeah. Okay, but this is your brother. Right. You knew each other when you were kids, so part of your preparation would be fantasizing about those prior circumstances growing up. For example, close your eyes. I want you to imagine 
Your brother is three years younger than you. You're eight years old, and he's five. Okay. And you're taking him to the park. And he runs, you get to the park, and he runs up to the swing. And he sits in the swing. He doesn't know how to push himself up. He asks you to push it, so you start pushing him. And he keeps yelling for you to push him higher and higher. Push him way up in the sky. And now he's flapping his arms and squawking like a bird and acting like a little jerk. And you tell him if he doesn't hold on to that swing, you're going to pull him down. So he's still flapping his arms and squawking. And now all of a sudden he yells down. And you help him get down. He gets on the swing and he starts running across the park with you chasing him. You don't know where he's going. Finally, you see it and you hear it ice cream truck. You hear the bells ringing. He runs up to the truck and he points to the picture of his favorite ice cream. He's jumping up and down. You don't have very much money. You go through all your pockets and you take out just enough change, $1.95, to buy him his ice cream. And he's eating it. And he says to you, how come you don't have any? You tell him you don't have any money. Any more money. So he breaks off half of his ice cream and he gives it to you. And you're eating it. It tastes amazing. And then your little brother hugs you. And he tells you you're the best, best brother in the world. And now you're 15 years old. You're sitting in the kitchen. It's after school, you're doing your homework. Your brother comes in. He doesn't even speak to you. He goes in his room, he slams the door, puts on music really loud, and you can smell pot, he's smoking pot. You go and knock on the door. You tell him he's gonna get in trouble for mommy when she comes home, if he doesn't quit that. He tells you to fuck off. Now you're 20 years old, you're living on your own. You get a knock at the door, it's your brother. He's crying. He says he got thrown out of the house. His mother caught him. Your mother caught him stealing money to buy drugs and she threw him out. He asked if he could stay with you. You say yes, but he has to be good. He told him he can sleep on the couch. The next morning you wake up and you go to work. You see your brother still sleeping on the couch. You don't know whether to wake him to send to school or leave him there. You shake him. He stirs. You tell him he's time to get up for school. He tells you he promises he'll get up in five minutes. You leave and go to work. Six o'clock in the evening, you come home. When you get to the door of your apartment, you realize there's something weird because the door is halfway open. Not only that, the doorknob is broken off, and the lock is broken off the door. You open the door. It looks like a hurricane hit. Everything is thrown around the room. Dish is smashed. Refrigerated door is open. Bottles of food, bottles of juices are thrown all over the place. The floor is really sticky. Looks like someone took a knife through the couch. All the stuff is out, like someone was looking for something. You go into the bedroom, it looks even worse. The mattress is on the floor, it's all cut up. Looks like someone tried to burn burn it down. The whole place smells like burnt something or other. All your clothes are ripped up, torn. You, you had a big screen TV set, stolen. You go look in your closet, you were saving money to buy a new car. You had ten thousand dollars saved. An envelope is gone. All your values. All your papers gone. A few minutes later, you hear noise in the living room. It's your brother. He looks shocked. He asks you what happened. He says he has no idea. You always could tell when your brother was lying. You take him and you grab him and you push him against the wall. He spits in your face. You let him go. 
He runs out of the apartment. He called 911. Tell him you want to report a robbery. A few minutes later, you hear sirens. And a few minutes after that, the cops drag your brother in. Ask him, ask you if you want to press charges. You say yes. Your brother starts cursing you as they drag him out of the apartment. This is the first time you've seen him in four years. Open your eyes. How's it going? What are you doing now? Wow. No hug? How did you get out? This morning. Took three buses to get here. Why are you here? I didn't put an address down for my poor wife. I said, I didn't want to see you. Like I said, I was sorry. How come you stay mad at me? Sorry? It's not going to work. I need more than that. I don't know what else I can do. I'm trying here. That's not good enough. Yeah, that's not good enough. I want you to leave. Leave? Where am I going to go? No, my problem. I can't leave. My parole officer can come in for the weekly visits after every place to stay. I'll just tell him it didn't work out. Good. Now, did that, the, so what we did with that visualization, involving not just the visual, but the smells, the sounds, the taste of the ice cream, the hear the sound of the ice cream uh, bells, all that stuff, is to give you an experience from your imagination. You can use your past, you can use your imagination, you can use a combination of both. <coughs> Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to create that history so there's some prior circumstances that make it a little harder for you to get rid of them. Right. Does that make sense? Because yeah. you do have the love somewhere. Okay. okay? Now, Strong moment before the scene. Moment before the scene. Now, my moment before the scene is easy if I'm playing the other character. It could be a thought like, which I write down at the top of the scene, if my brother doesn't help me, I'll be dead within a week. Or, my brother really fucked me over. But I'm going to forgive him. Which I write down at the top of the scene below my objective. So when I come to do the scene, I'm already living a life of the character. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, my moment before can also be an inner monologue for the moment before. Let me demonstrate. Wow, the people on this bus look more unhappy than the people did in prison. What the fuck is their problem? They can get off this bus anytime they want. They can go to that jack-in-the-box. They can sleep late, they can quit their job, they can move to another town. Man, what are they so unhappy about? I am so going to enjoy being free. I'm going to party every night. I'm going to have a good time and I'm never going back to prison. Wow. Our brother lives in a really nice neighborhood. He's done really well for himself. This going to work out really well for me. Really well. Let's go. Get the idea? So when I start the scene, I'm already in the life of the character. So when I'm in the waiting room, when I'm driving to the audition, I'm already thinking the thoughts of the character. Does that make sense? Now, your moment before is different. Because it doesn't involve me. Maybe you're getting ready for a date. Okay? You think this person's coming over. Maybe you think the person knocked at the door is your date. Okay? Maybe you're home from work and you're thinking... Peace and quiet. I don't have to talk to anybody until tomorrow. Nobody bothers me. Nobody bugs me. Nobody asks me for shit. I have my nice place. And I am left alone. Then he shows up. You get the idea? Yeah. So you're already in the little, middle of the life of the character you moaned before. Now, next thing is finding more levels in your performance. So it's not all on the same level. Okay. Okay? So let's take the line... What are you doing here? Your first line. All right, close your eyes. Take a breath and silently say that line. And see what images, thoughts, and feelings come up. And again, silently say it again. And see what images, thoughts, and feelings come up. 
What are you doing? Sign, here? No, silently, oh. silently, silently. Say the line. Did you take a breath? Let's see what images, thoughts, and feelings come up. And again, silently say it again. Let's see what images, thoughts, and feelings come up. One more time. Images, thoughts, and feelings. Now just look at me and say the line. What are you doing there? Very good. And when you're doing this exercise by yourself, for every sentence, time permitting, do it to the chair and imagine his response. So you're not listening to yourself. When you're preparing your lines, you're never running them to try to figure out how to say them. What are you doing here? Tactic or mini objective, like in basketball, passing the ball. What are you doing here? Is your tactic to confront, to push him away, to challenge? What do you think you're trying to do? Trying to see what he's thinking. Like, okay. why would you come in? To try to get inside his head? Yeah. Okay, well, let's... Okay, let's say to get inside his head. Okay, yeah. or to make him feel... What are you trying to make him feel? Ridiculous. Okay, to make him feel ridiculous? Yeah. So you write down to make him feel ridiculous and say aloud to me, I want you to feel ridiculous. I want you to feel ridiculous. More, let go. I want you to feel ridiculous. Again. I want you to feel ridiculous. Line. What are you doing there? So don't pull back. So they go, I want you to feel ridiculous. What are you doing here? Okay. So the feeling from the action okay. flows through the line. Does that make sense to you? Gotcha. Okay, so there's a book called Actions, which is a thesaurus for actors. It's listed in the class rules, and it's recommended if you like to work this way. If okay. you do get this book, read the introduction, which is the best part of the book. Now, let's take, when did you get out? You see that line? So again, it's like a basketball. Passing the ball, or throwing the layup, or a free throw, or a three-pointer. When did you get out? What tactic is that? What are you trying to do to get from him or make him feel? To see if he's lying. Okay. To, to challenge? Yeah. Good. So you write down to challenge and say, I'm challenging you. Okay. Oh, I'm challenging you. Again. I'm challenging you. Again. I'm challenging you. When did you get out? Okay. How about to, uh, do you trust him? No. Okay. To put him on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot. Again. I'm putting you on the spot. More. I'm putting you on the spot. When'd you get out? Get the idea? So you do this exercise just like the first one. You focus on the chair and imagine the other person. You don't do what most people do, which is give themselves line readings and try to figure out how to say the lines. Don't do that. It's a waste of your time because you're going to be doing the imitation of Emmanuel. Okay. All right. Now, the third way to work on the line is called line so it takes line. Let me demonstrate it. I'll take the line, took three buses to get here. Just watch me. It's called line so it takes line. Took three buses to get here. Fuck you for not picking me up. Took three buses to get here. You know what? Everybody else who got out of prison had someone picking them up. Someone that loved them. Took three buses to get here. You think that's what I want to do? Sitting on a smelly fucking bus for nine hours? Knowing that nobody gives a shit about me? Took three buses to get here. See what I'm doing? All I'm doing is trusting my impulses in the moment and having it flow through the line. Does that make sense? So you're adding, you're adding to the line, basically. I'm putting in what I want to say and then I'm saying the line the same way I would say it. Okay. So an extreme example would be, fuck you, took three buses to get here. So I don't go, fuck you, took three buses to get here. No, it's fuck you, took three buses to get here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let's try with a line, uh, let me, let's try with another line. Okay, let's take the line, not my problem. So he says, leave where am I going? You say, not my problem. So this is line to fix line. First say the line. Not my problem. Good. What's your impulse? What do you want to say to me? <laughs> why do you think I'm going to help you? Line. Not no, my problem. No. If you go, why do you think I'm going to help you? You know, you go, why do you think I'm going to help you? Not my problem. Not, why do you think I'm going to help you? Not my problem. Do you understand? However you say the subtext is how you say the text. Gotcha. gotcha. So you don't drop it to do the text the same way. Gotcha. Try one more time. Say, not my problem. Not my problem. What's your impulse? What do you want to say to me? Why do you think I'm going to help you? Not my problem. 
Don't pull and now <laughs> more different subjects. Go again. All right, all right. Not my problem. Uh, What's your impulse? What do you want to say to me? Focus on me. Not my problem. I know everything you've done. Never, it's not gonna happen. It's not my problem. It's Good. Definitely not my problem. Like what? Like come on. You have mom. You have your other sister. You have your friends. Like why are you gonna do it? I, this is not my problem. I'm not Excellent. Gonna you. Very good. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, let me demonstrate even more with that word. Not my problem. I bailed you out when we were kids. I don't know you anything anymore. Not my problem. You think the world owes you? What does the world owe you? The world doesn't owe you anything. Not my problem. You get the idea? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's try all three ways with another line. Let's on the second page. You should have thought of that before you got on that shit. You see that line? Yep. Yeah. Good. Close your eyes. Take a breath and silently say that line. Mm -hmm. You see what images, thoughts, and feelings come up. And again. Silently say it again. And see what images, thoughts, and feelings come up. And one more time. Silently say it again. And see what images, thoughts, and feelings come up. Just look at me and say the line. So, you should have thought of that. Oh my god. That's right. You should have thought before you got on that shit. You should have thought about that before you got on that shit. Good. What are you trying to make him feel? Why would you do... I mean, we've seen all these movies before with, you know, people doing drugs. You've read the articles. We were in class. We were in elementary school. They told us, don't do drugs. You have to, to smoke. Keep putting the line. Drugs. So, I mean... What's the word? You should have thought of that before. No, you, you can't go back to neutral. To you can't make your opinion less interesting than... More interesting than the line. All right. Try it again. So, first say the line. This is line to fix line. Okay. Uh, you should have thought about that before you got on that shit. Good. What's your impulse? I mean, come on, we already knew that drugs mess up people's lives. Like, if you're going to do crack cocaine heroin, why would you do that? You should have thought about that before you got on that shit. Good, more subtext. Okay. I mean, what? Come on. Like, we, our uncle used to be doing drugs. We had aunties doing drugs. You see them on the streets, they're all homeless. You should have thought about that before you got on that shit. Very good. Get the idea? Now, the other way, you should have thought it before you got on your, that shit. Maybe your tactic is to make him feel what? Guilty? Stupid? Yeah. Which one? Stupid. Good. So you write that to make it feel stupid. Just look at me and say, I want you to feel stupid. I want you to feel stupid. More. I want you to feel stupid. Again. I want you to feel stupid. You should have thought about that before you got on that shit. Get the idea? Okay. Otherwise, it's kind of coming out the same way all the time. Right. And the more tactics you have to get this piece of shit out of your apartment, the more levels you can be playing. Okay. Overcoming your obstacles. Your objective is to get rid of this piece of shit. What obstacles do you have? Um, the fact that I still kind of love him. Yeah, he's your brother. Yeah. It's hard to get rid of your brother. You have a history with him. Yeah. Okay? Another obstacle is maybe you do want to help him anyway. Okay? But the problem is you don't trust him. Right. Okay? And maybe you feel guilty. That's an obstacle towards fulfilling your objective to get rid of his family. Yeah, he's family. Yeah. The more obstacles, the better. Obstacles come from yourself. The other person, the world, they can be physical, emotional, spiritual, psychological, moral, ethical, the more the better. Now, another thing I'm always going to do is divide a piece of paper in half. I'm going to write down the similarities and the differences between me and the character. Yeah. Okay? Those differences are what I have to work on. Why do you get free uh, boxes of water? Oh, God, I work for them. You work for that company? Yeah. Are they doing well? I guess. I don't know why anyone wants a box of water. Mm -hmm. I like them. I know you like them with free, but you wouldn't buy them otherwise, would nah, you? Nah, not a chance. Question so far? No. Nah. Okay, so let's talk about a couple things. Let's run the other scene once. You have the other one, right? Always try to make copies if you can. I don't have a printer, but I'll, yeah, I just need to, alright, I'll do that. Yeah. It's just because the thing is, you, you're an actor who says he wants to work all the time. You want to prepare all the time. You're not going to be able to prepare if you don't run material with people. Okay. That should be at the top of your list of things to do, is to read with people. Read. Does that make sense? All right. You want to sit down and do that all the time, until it's no big deal. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. You sure you don't want some wine? 
Oh, uh, Keep it. I'm all right. Put yourself on the line. Special night, right? Right. right. Your wife doesn't know you got this shit. No. No. Do you ever think of us? Because I do all the time. You, you know, let's focus on right now. Uh, okay. Mm, let's order. You patronize me. I don't like that. Well, I'm not. I'm not trying to, Sylvia. So yeah, I'm just. Just don't know what you want from yes, me. You That's why you didn't pay your wife about this. There's nothing to tell. And you know that. I know he did said something right now. That was a mistake. Don't mind. I know it was a mistake. I saw in your eyes you were feeling something for me. Sympathy, Sylvia. Sympathy. We were friends as much as we could be in the uh, given circumstances. You confided in me. So as you were going through a hard time, I wanted to comfort you. You were so fragile and just out of sympathy. Sympathy? You mean pity? You pity me? Is that what you're saying? So, please settle down. I saw something in your eyes and I kissed you and you kissed me back. Why else would I come? I kissed you and I thought I grew next to you between us until you kissed me back. I know. And I shouldn't have done that. I was wrong. Wrong? You call it sympathy wrong, but you still didn't both know it. But it didn't mean anything. I mean, just because you talk about us like there ever was not us doesn't make it true. Fine. Really? Yeah, fine. So you're okay? Uh-huh. I think I'll just sort of room service my hotel. Good. So one thing I would say, you want to know something you do every day? Read out loud with people. Improv until you're very comfortable listening and trusting your impulses. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, uh, what nights are you available for class? Um, oh, man. Can you do Thursday nights? <clears throat> yeah, I think I think Wednesdays. You gonna? And I'm recording it. Start so recording the hour starting now. So if you can read them before out loud, that'd be great. <laughs> Make a policy. If you miss class because you are working as an actor and cannot attend class, or you have an audition and cannot attend class, you will receive a private half hour makeup. If you miss class for any other reason, there is no makeup. So that means if your dog, the airport, a surprise party, the flu, your ankle, your thumb, your regular job, all important things you need to deal with, trip to the airport, things you need to deal with, none do with my class is no makeup. If you miss class because you're acting, or auditioning, at a screening of a movie you're in, meeting with your agent, shooting something, anything you're doing with acting and you can't come, I will give you a private half hour. Okay. Anything not to do with acting, is your responsibility. Is that acceptable to you? Sounds good. Fair? Fair. Good. Read the rest of the rules on your own at home. If you have any questions, email me by tomorrow. Read that other piece of paper, sign it, bring it back. Paperwork finished. Cool. Okay. Do you have a picture and resume with you? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, have you taken a lot of classes, some classes, no classes? No. I, I took one over at Berg Studios. Okay. I took it about a year and a half ago. Okay. What class, what kind of class was it? it was just an intro. To okay. Like How long was it? Three months. Okay. Three months. So the basics of acting. The basics. So when I say objective, strong moment before, prior circumstances familiar to you or no? I have an idea what that okay. means, we'll but I couldn't explain, explain Okay. It. okay. Yeah. Tell me goals and obstacles. Goals and obstacles. Um, my, my main goal would be to just be, to, to find a way to improve myself as an actor on the daily. Okay. Like I really want to find like certain exercises or tr modes of thinking that I could just practice on the daily to become a better actor. Okay. Cause, uh, I'm a big believer in if the more you work at something. Okay. So I'm going to give you 